the Silk Road auction of the Bitcoins that we've been anticipating for several weeks now uh, have finally happened. And there was one winner, one single winner in the whole auction who won nearly or it was nearly 30,000 Bitcoins. One person won all of them. And uh, so, Evan, uh, who who was the single winner of the Silk Road Bitcoins? The winner of the Silk Road Bitcoins is a venture capitalist named Tim Draper. And um, he is an investor in a company named Verum, or however you say it. Yeah, I like and, to say um, Verum. Verum. <laughs> and uh, Tim Draper and uh, is working with Verum, Verum, whatever. Uh, he, Tim Draper and this company plan to use those Silk Road Bitcoins to... Um, get Bitcoin into emerging markets with weak currencies. Okay. And this news came uh, like a day a day after, I think, uh, a day after the Marshalls announced that one person won them all. And then the CEO of Verum uh, made a blog post about it saying that Tim Draper was the guy and this is what we're going to do with it. And um, so that's how he found out who won the Bitcoins and their project... It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So what? What they're gonna they're gonna provide liquidity to emerging markets with with weak currencies? Are they like referring to Argentina and Venezuela and countries like that? Yeah. The, um, from what I take from it is they're gonna encourage the acceptance of Bitcoin in um, in emerging markets, which are developing countries whose uh, economies are improving and they're like becoming global competitors. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but their people are still generally poor. Um, so hmm. these would be several of the South American countries. I don't know if China would still be considered as an emerging market. Um, but these countries, one thing they have in common is they have uh, very weak currencies, uh, mostly caused by, uh, government depreciation. Um, because a lot of these currency or not currencies, a lot of these countries are, uh, former uh, socialist countries or socialist leaning countries mm. so the um like back in the 20th century in, in the 70s and 80s they had um a lot of inflation because their central bank banks printed a lot of money to fund all these socialist projects so now they have really weak currencies and tim draper and Verum are looking to fix that okay so do you, do you think it's gonna have a have a big effect um, on these well, f actually, first of all, do you think that uh, the Silk Road Bitcoins are gonna actually, I don't know, like help this this venture out and and make make the room more profitable, more successful? Yeah, because um, th their whole point, they said that their their entire goal is to introduce uh, liquidity into these emerging markets, and so you know, getting more money obviously increases your liquidity. So. Yeah. Um, Having these coins, it's just um, it's just a simple fact that they're gonna have more money to inject into these countries. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna help. Um, and if it works, if they can get businesses to use Bitcoin or like you know local economies trading exclusively in Bitcoin, um, mm. it'll it'll definitely help these poor people out in in the developing countries because. Um, at that point, if they can go anywhere and buy everything they need with Bitcoin, you know they won't have to worry about dealing with their um, with their weak uh, government currencies. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, ideally, like uh, that should provide a lot of help to people who, you know, that they want to get out of poverty, but it's so difficult for them because their own government is debasing their own currency by so much. Um, like Argentina is the example that keeps coming to my mind. Um, their inflation is really, really terrible. And people, it's really hard for people to be economically successful when your own money system is basically bullshit. It's basically bullshit because of what the government does to it. Yep. Yeah, in Argentina, they, I mean, they have like extremely high inflation. Um, and it's the kind of inflation that our central bank says is impossible to happen. So they, they say it'll never happen. But obviously yeah. it's happening in Argentina and it's happening in a lot of other countries as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these people, uh, like average citizens, just can't get ahead because the price of everything is always rising. You know, they can barely afford to live. Mm -hmm. 
so um, you know, much less become wealthy. So hopefully, this Bitcoin project will um, help alleviate some of that poverty. Okay, so let's let's move into a couple of different angles on this same story. Uh, first of all, um, I was partially wrong in my prediction that the U.S. Marshals would screw this up some more. I thought that uh, it would either take them really long to send out the coins to the winner, or they would mess it up and send it to the wrong person, or send part of it to the wrong person. But uh, maybe it was because there was only one winner, but the transaction happened really smoothly. Uh, Tim Draper got all 29,655 bitcoins in one transaction. People online, regular people, actually saw the transaction happen on the blockchain faster than the uh, Varum and, and Tim Draper were able to announce it on their blog post. So it actually happened really smoothly. Uh, were you, were you well, as surprised as, as I was about that? I was surprised, but this is only a small chunk of the Silk Road stash. It's true. Uh, they're going to be auctioning off a lot more, so they, there's still plenty of time for them to mess up. That's true. Yeah, there's <laughs> over 100,000 left that are yep. still uh, sitting in limbo, sitting probably in a hard drive somewhere in some federal office, you know? Yep, all we need is the right hacker to get in there. <laughs> Not that we are <laughs> suggesting anything, but uh, nope, it'll, it'll I definitely be interesting. Be it. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, we, there's still a long way to go and plenty of ways to mess up. Um, so another another angle of this is that, in a way, the government is kind of giving their approval to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and demonstrating that the coins, despite having been used on Silk Road for supposedly illegal activities, and the the operation of that website was inherently illegal in so many federal laws, despite that, the government sold all of them, well, the, the Silk Road uh, user account coins, uh, to to a venture venture capitalist who's who's going to use them for a different venture entirely in these emerging markets. So it's a really an affirmation of the fungibility of Bitcoin in the eyes of the government itself. If they have if they try to enact this uh, this blacklisting strategy or and green listing strategy that some in the community have feared, where they uh, taint certain coins because they were used in previous Ill illegal activities. Uh, they really they can't implement that anymore. Else they would be total and complete hypocrites for previously selling the Silk Road bitcoins for a profit. Basically. Yeah, and I I also see it as kind of like um, an admission of defeat um, because you know governments all around the world are, are trying to get people to not use bitcoin china has like actually um tried to ban bitcoin and is like they tried to shut down all the exchanges in china and they're going after people that are using it and um uh you know the irs just recently uh in america the irs just recently tried to um uh tried to tax Bitcoin and they, they made it uh, such a difficult process that um, anyone who tried to comply with it uh, just wouldn't be able to do so. So that could definitely discourage a lot of people from using it. So we can see governments all around the world uh, trying to, to uh, get rid of Bitcoin. And um, so I think the fact that uh, the federal government, uh, instead of denying Bitcoin is valuable, and uh, just letting it, just letting those coins sit in a hard drive somewhere. Yeah. Um, instead, they're selling them and profiting off of them. Yeah. Um, I think it's a sign that they've just given up. You know, they've realized that they can't get rid of it. Um, just like, just like they did with the drug war. You know, they've uh, they've realized a long time ago that they're yeah. not going to stop people from using drugs, but they keep waging this war because. They make so much money off of it because they have an excuse to print more money and they have an excuse to raise taxes. Yeah. And for um, profit prisons. There's a whole list yeah. of incentives for the drug war. And um, you know, there's also some people who believe. I'm not saying I believe it, um, but there's also some people who believe uh, that the CIA gets a lot of their funding for their black budget that nobody knows about from. Um, Drug sales from and such. engaging in exchange with the South American drug cartels. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're seeing the same thing happening with Bitcoin. The government uh, knows that they've lost, 
So they're just deciding to make as much money off of it as they can, just like they're doing with the drug war. Um, so I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, pretty strong legitimization of Bitcoin. Yeah. Like uh, the government, if, if they were hypothetically listening to us right now, they would probably respond with the claim that, oh, we just wanted to sell them in this auction because that's what the U.S. Marshals do. They sell seized items that they get in uh, other – they raid – they do drug raids and confiscate all kinds of products and, you know, cars and such from drug dealers. Yeah. And they just sell it in an auction style and make money off it. So they would respond, oh, Bitcoin, it's just an asset that we that we stole, <laughs> confiscated from uh, DPR's hard drive. And we just want to sell it because it's worth something and, you know, it's just a confiscated good. But it's – that's still an admission that it has a lot of value and it and it's worth a lot and the government the federal marshals obviously don't have any practical use for the bitcoins so they they just want to sell it but either way it's something valuable and and it's probably going to provide a lot of help to um these emerging markets thanks to Tim Draper and Varum and it's going to give a lot of money to the federal government if they keep doing dark net market busts. <laughs>